You know, there's there's things, there's outside things and indoor things. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Edward. Thank you. There are no chairmen. Agenda item four, national events. Dan, take it away. Thank you. Um, we're here today to. Review the budget and review the work we did in our last meeting. And the department heads are here to basically answer any questions you may have on their items, uh, their requests in the capital, and their, their, their regular operating expenses. Um, I would like to go through the expenditures first to uh, highlight some changes that we've made since the last um, meeting, if that's all right with the board. Okay, I printed out a copy, hard copies for everybody. Also, you have the online version. So um, let's start with the expenses on page one. One of the things we did, if you look at 401-120, we dropped out the new prospective employee um, for the admin. Uh, And that also had a ripple effect up to 400, 150 where the uh, medical benefits. So it would affect both. Um, so that's a reduction there. Yes, 400, 150 was reduced. Um, you'll see where it says department request, that was the original number. And then the next number in where it says admin recommend, that's the new number. All right, just so everybody is clear on that. Um, and again, if you go 401, 120, you'll see the reduction there. So it those two followed through. Um, on the second page, 400, 310, um, just some, some minor changes, but it, when you when you move like $10,000, it adds up at the end of the day. <laughs> um, Lower the solicitor cost. And what we did, is we've taken a look at um, prior years. And some of the prior, prior years were a little bit on the higher side. This year we're tracking uh, to be more in line with the 40,000 as opposed to um, 50,000. So we're gonna go with that. Uh, and again, uh, same with, um, you go down to 408, 100 for engineering. Um, we, we're dropping that back down. And a lot of those costs, um, we think that are going to be made up inside. So yeah. this is general fund. Yes. <clears throat> All the other funds are healthy. The general fund is the one with the pressure on it. So I'm just flipping through it here. Uh, page five. 432, 221. We're going to do our original salt purchases out of um, liquid fuels for um, 2025. Um, liquid fuel salt purchases an eligible expense. Liquid fuels does has a significant balance in it. So if we if we need to in an emergency, we can certainly purchase out of the general fund. But our original purchases are going to come out of liquid fuels for 2025. And again, the thought is to take pressure off the general fund. Um, traffic signal maintenance, we dropped that down from 30. I'm sorry, that's 433, 310. It's just below it. Um, dropped that down from 30,000 to 20,000. And again, it was looking at where we're at year to date and prior years. Um, obviously, if something happens, and we need to take care of it, we will. Uh, you know, that's not discretionary spending. But a lot of times, some of the bigger repairs are if they're hit by a truck, but we, we get reimbursed for that through insurance. So there's an offset on in the revenue side. So why it may show like a large expense 
in one given year, we actually get revenue in um, in the general fund on the revenue. So just trying to track things a little bit. Uh, next page. Sorry, Ryan. 439, 320. Um, Ryan had asked to increase the in-house paving from $50,000 to $100,000. While I, I certainly understand and appreciate his concern, I do understand also that the reality of the budget and trying to um, make things work, it, it's probably not prudent this year to do that. So I'm just gonna recommend that we go back to the, the 50,000 that we had before. So at the end of the day, those reductions in the general fund, if you go to page eight at the very top, where it's just the, the total line, <clears throat> is, a, is a total reduction of $260,000 and some change. Um, can we find some more to reduce in the general fund? Probably, um, not a whole lot. The general fund is basic, as I've said before, is our everyday checkbook. It pays our daily expenses and a lot of it is, is fixed cost. Um, so we, you know, they go through and where we where I thought we had some discretion, I made those changes. Um, and so that's a net decrease in the general fund of $260,000. Now, if you go over to revenue, and I'm sorry to jump around like this, but I try and compare fund to fund. <laughs> um, page one in the general fund, uh, 310, 210, earned income tax collection. We're tracking for this year to hit our budget number, which is $3,325,000. Um, looking at where we're at year to date, we're at $2.6 million, 2.626. So, you know, um, we, we collect in the general fund on average about six hundred and eighty thousand dollars per quarter so that will get us to that budget number i have not plugged in yet an increase in collection for 25 um, normally you would see a three to four percent increase just by the natural income growth um, and also we have some new housing units coming online we don't know, and I've asked um, Keystone to give me that number, but I don't have it yet. But my guess is year in the past th three years, our collection has increased in total about $300,000 each year. Um, so am I comfortable putting in a number of three, six at this point? No, I'm not. Um, I want to I want to hear from Keystone what their opinion is, and we've asked for that. But I, I I will we will probably up that number slightly, or at least my projection, and it's certainly up to the board where you want to go with it. But I, I I'm pretty I'm I'm very confident that three four five is probably three million four hundred fifty thousand dollars is probably a safe number. Um, but at this point, I don't have that in there. I'm, I'm going with what I know we're going to get for this year. Again, when I project revenues and expenditures, revenues, I like to be conservative and expenditures. I like to think that sometimes we're going to be, we're going to spend more than we actually do. When I put a budget together, my goal is, you know, receive 108% of revenues that we budget and spend 92%. Um, of what you budget. That's that's a goal. Whether you get it or not each year, it's hard to do, but that's you, at this point, some of these are more than guesses. They're they're educated, but I, I like to be conservative on the revenue numbers, especially when we still have two months to go before we adopt the final budget. 
the the next one I changed was the cable fran TV franchise. You'll see that's that's been decreasing year over year. We originally put in 220. I looked at the the number and I I think we're safe at 230, 230,000. I'm sorry. Make it sound like $230. Uh, <clears throat> we are, as everybody else is, experiencing the cord cutting. And the more that happens, that number will continue to decrease. While there's still a lot of people that just have regular cable, may, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of who don't. And, you know, we have to face that reality that that once solid income that grew and uh, you know we, we may we may see an offset with the new houses coming in or the new developments coming in and the the cutters we could be revenue neutral but we don't we don't know that yet so again i'm just trying to be a little conservative there um overtime reimbursables 355 141 i upped that to thirty thousand dollars from 20 um, I believe that that's a good number when we might actually, um, depending upon what the number we see from uh, the last events, um, that we may increase that a little bit more. But we want to see what the number comes in from the last events that you, that you got. Question if I could. Sure. Uh, have we build a shrine? Yes. And that's what I want to see what the, when that comes back. And what about the special event that they had at the shrine with the... Uh... President of Poland. Is that something we all No, but President of Poland, unfortunately, we're not going to get. Okay. But the fair we're getting. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. One thing is doing that. The other thing is, you know, if you have an event like that in your jurisdiction you're required to provide the safety and security for everyone who's in attendance regardless of who's footing the bill um you know we're responsible so we don't want anything bad to happen therefore we have to make sure we're, we're putting resources into it that way or if there is a that's a planned event they're they're making money off of it um they they basically contract our service right you can you can look at it in, in this line too that why we have the mutual aid agreement where we'll help out other towns when events happen um in this case we asked for help from other towns to assist the polish secret service asked us to assist them and while they're not part of the mutual aid agreement it is it still just flows kind of along those lines no. Good clarity. Well, I understand. The next items I addressed were 362, 410, 420, and 430, which are uh, basically building permits. I went in and I basically I budgeted where we're at right now through three quarters. I, I we'll see some more come in in the fourth quarter. The permits will slow down. Um, probably by the end of October, first two weeks in, in November, just because of the weather. Um, but I feel comfortable in budgeting those numbers. We still have a lot of work being done in the township. A lot more work will be done next year. So I, I'd anticipate that we'll be safe on those numbers. After next year, we'll have to take a hard look at those numbers because we really don't have too much more coming online in you know 26 or in 27. We'll probably get back just to the normal um, renovation type work um, to people's homes and that kind of stuff. But we'll we'll for next year. I feel comfortable that we'll still be able to to make these numbers. So those changes right there amounted to about one hundred and forty thousand dollars in additional revenue. So when you put that together with the um, 260 that was reduced out of expenses. That's a, a net of $300,000 that we've um, changed a position in the, in the general fund. The good news and bad news is that while we reduced $300,000, we still have a 
um, a gap between revenues and expenditures, a significant gap. <laughs> About $800,000. If you look at the... the question. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, 400, yes. Excuse my math, I'm trying to do it on the fly. <laughs> um, if you look at our revenues that we anticipated, $6,400,000, and that's general fund total line. And on page eight of the expenditure line, we're looking at 7.22 million. So while I think we can go through and pick up another $150,000 in revenue, via earned income tax, I can probably safely shave another 50, maybe maybe 100, but I doubt it, out of expenditures without really taking a, a knife to it that I wouldn't recommend. Um, but I, I think we can get 50 out of it, so that would be a, another 200 um, off of that total to get us to the $600,000 mark. Um, my recommendation <laughs> is that we set a plan in place over several years to close that gap. I'm not asking the board to raise real estate taxes all, all one year to, to close the gap, <clears throat> but set, you know, do a two-year or three-year plan. Pick it up. We have the reserve that we can pull. But the more you pull on your reserve, it's not there in the future. I don't think it's unrealistic um, and unreasonable to put a plan in place to close that gap. Um, and I'm not asking to do it all in one year. Do it in two or three. So basically, the gap is about $600,000 at the end of the day. What was over about three mills. Each mill gets us about $189,000, give or take. Um, so if you want to do a mill and a half and a mill and a half, or if you want to do one mill, one mill, one mill, or if you want to bite the bull and do all three, you can. But I, at some point, I think we need to, to be realistic and um, Live like every other person and spend what you have and don't spend what you're saving. I mean, the savings are nice when you get when we and those those reserves are there for a purpose. You know, if the economy goes completely south and building permits dry up and real estate transfers happen don't happen, you know that's what that's when you pull on those. But when we're when the when things are moving forward. It's the time to try and build and not pull. So uh, my recommendation for the board um, is to seriously consider an increase in the real estate tax for a general fund. The other funds are all healthy and solvent. Um, they don't need additional funding. The, the one that we get a little, we have a little pressure on, but it's our, it's our discretionary one, the largest discretionary one is capital, obviously. Um, that's our, you know, that's where you buy your Christmas present, so to speak. Um, and you decide what you're going to do. Uh, so that's the one that while we fund it each year to the tune of two, of one mil goes in each year, it has a significant balance. So we, we have some room in there. The, um, when it comes to, and I know Mayor Beth, you asked me about fire, where we can go with that. Um, I believe they raised it to 10 mils um, is the cap now. Um, I think bef before we address, and th again, this is just my, this is just my opinion. Um, before we address outside people, we should address inside. We should take care of, and I use this analogy, we should take care of our house. And once we get our house in order, then we can look at other houses. Uh, and that's just me speaking. Um, okay. uh, 
Right. Yes. And we and, and they raised the limit to ten million. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're, they're basically they're looking at um, the eventuality that down the road fire departments are going to have to change the way they operate. Um, not so much the middle of the state, but more on the um, the edges. They are. Um, it, so I think that's just a realization that, yeah, I, yeah, they did. They both went up. Um, if we're going to look at any of those, I would take a look at EMS to increase their funding. But as far as fire at this point, I would just. Right now, a fire department, from what we last heard, what we put it this year from them, they're doing okay. Mm -hmm. EMS, however, has been slowly dying for a year. So I, I think if anything, that should be addressed. Um, I think when we raised taxes two years ago, four years ago, 1.5 mil, it came out to be about a third dollar. And yeah, I'll, it's not. A, it's, it's, it's not. <laughs> I'll do the. I'll, I'll crunch those numbers and have them for preliminary budget to what per household it'll at, at a mill will equate per year. Um, I usually break it down even to a smaller denominator per month. Um, and it usually comes down to about a Big Mac. <laughs> but that's thirty dollars a year divided by twelve. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. But that again, no, when you people though, I would say seventy percent of homeowners escrow their their real estate taxes. So while it you it seems like you know you're not asking a lot, they have to actually increase their mortgage check to, to cover that portion. So in their in the in the mindset, it seems like it's more, but it's because they go into escrow and then it's pulled out of the escrow and account. But then again, they get to all, they get the right off the, the real estate tax. <laughs> We're dropping the bucket. We're dropping the bucket compared to the county. Um, yeah. Yep. It's about sixty dollars a month or a little less. Or actually it's about fifty forty-eight dollars a month. Yeah, I'm trying to do the mental math real quick without looking at my deck. Five sixty. Yeah. So now they're they're the recommended changes I have in the general fund. I think they're fair. I think they're equitable. And I think that you know, we need to, again, the board needs to start addressing that that hole that we have and, and, and try and get it balanced. Um, the Again, the big ticket items are in the capital. And before we get into capital, I, I'd like to um, I put in front of you an ARPA report, what we've, what we've spent in ARPA. And this was updated as of yesterday around two o'clock. I pop the first one came out. Um, I didn't have the full number and I got that yesterday. So our original funding was one point two million dollars. We've spent one million fifty six thousand. We basically have one hundred and fifty three thousand dollars that we need to commit to spend by the end of this year. Um, I've listed the projects that we've done with, and I get, on the front sheets, a total, uh, the inside is the actual full detail of what was done. But uh, as you can see, we did some technology upgrades to the tune of close to $60,000, some facility upgrades to about 280,000, police vehicles, 143,000, public works vehicles, 501,000, and improvements to the park. Um, to about 73,000. That number is going to go up because that has not been fully completed yet. 
but I would imagine maybe $10,000 more. Um, so we'll probably have about $135,000 um, left to allocate in this current calendar year. Um, one project that I'm going to recommend that we do, and we're still waiting to get numbers on, is the air system in here. We've we've talked to three different contractors. We have a fourth coming in today, if I'm not mistaken, um, to try and get numbers on. We anticipate that's going to be anywhere between fifty and eighty thousand uh, dollars, and that's to replace. We want to replace all the ceiling tiles. There's no sense taking down some, replacing. We might as well go ahead and do it. Um, it's going to be once we get the the quote and the board approves, we're going to get started on that this year, um, so, and we'll go through the the mechanism of that. We'll probably have to slide people around why that's happening because you can't be in the offices when they're doing that office and so forth. But we'll we'll figure all that that dynamic out. The other money that um, we're looking at this year is the website upgrade. Um, we hope to have, we're having a meeting right after this meeting today to talk about where we're at with the website process. Um, while we've shown a number of, before we estimated a number of $30,000, we don't know if it's going to be that yet. Um, but there is some, there will be, there will be a cost. Um, so at the end of the day, with the ARPA funds, we'll probably have maybe Fifty to sixty thousand dollars left this year to spend. What we we can do one of two things: we can pull something out of capital that's going to happen, and tell them to go ahead and do, get a purchase order and get it in order it this year, and then we're we're covered with that. Or we can go back and look at what we've spent already this year and um, our regular expenses and reallocate something that's already been done. Um, well, a project, not just, you know, supplies or something like that. We can take a look at that. But um, we'll we'll have more clarity on that once we get the number in for the building. And I would anticipate we'll have that in the next week, hopefully. I see Ryan shaking his head because <laughs> Ryan's been working very closely with the contractors trying to get this uh, moved along. They they Some of them have been good. Some of them have... Then contractors. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's where we're at with the ARPA funds. Um, I know Bridget had asked for, you know, a breakdown of all the expenses, and I hope this is what you were looking for. Okay. You're welcome. Um, I guess that leaves to talk what well, for the department heads, and I want to let them get back to work. Um, and this is where the board can you know, go through their capital expenses again and see what what's good, what's not good. What do we what do we do this year? What do we hold to next year? Um, keep in mind when we when we I just talked about the ARPA funds. If you look at the admin costs, there's two line items down there. Ceiling tile replacement and website design, you can take those out because they're going to happen this year. So they're already removed from the list. Um, we can go down the list in, in the order that you have it. If you want to look at the police and ask the chief any questions, you certainly don't have to make a decision today. You can, you can tell me later. Um, but if you want to have any additional conversation with the chief about his request, um, I would ask that you... you Ask your questions to the chief. <laughs> okay. Now, I would. I, I mean, I think that we have to try and get an idea. Again, we can always reduce the budget, even after we adopt the preliminary. It's when you increase, you you don't have room. You only have ten percent to grow between preliminary and final. We can adopt a preliminary budget with these numbers and still cut. That's not that's not unheard of. So you don't have to make final decisions today. But if you want more clarification on some of the items, um, this would certainly be a good opportunity to do it. Question about the structure. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's my my work unit. Okay. Whether I'm going oh, okay. anywhere, going out. That's the vehicle I need. How about the truck? How how much is that used to patrol versus that's used Monday through Friday during day work. Eight hours a day, maybe five days a week, so forty hours a week. And is that all certain in that truck? Those forty hours or yeah. okay. So, so those are because those they, are what we call more or less administrative special vehicles. They don't get replaced. So the patrol vehicles they, they have more use. They get we have a five year replacement plan for hours. Okay. Yeah. So so every five years we're replacing them. These vehicles are over eight, eight years old. So between eight and ten years is when we look to replace these type of vehicles. Um, obviously, yes, they don't get as much use. But also, both of these vehicles will be repurposed. Um, the, the, the utility truck will go to Public Works uh, for them to utilize. Uh, my vehicle will be used as a. We have a, a 2008 Ford Taurus out there that we're using for work and the training. That vehicle would be sold, and my vehicle would then be used for. Training purposes for or backup administrative vehicle uh, or detectives or command staff. Okay. And just because you had mentioned that they seem to be very low mileage and fairly new cars, I mean, this was curious. Uh, it was fairly new. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, originally, I think you had guessed that they were five years old. No, I, I, I said they were. Well, the mine's a 2017, so it's seven years old. Um, and the, the truck uh, is a 2016, so it's eight years old. Yeah, question. And one of the things, too, with, with vehicle replacements, I try to keep you know, budget wise. I try to uh, project that we're going to replace two vehicles every year so that that number doesn't change as much. We can anticipate that that's what the number is going to be. We're not going to have a big jump one year where you know, we're replacing three vehicles or four vehicles. We try to keep it the same every year. Yeah, what, Barnes? Yeah. So since I've been here, we've gotten two vehicles each year. I have a question for Brian of your uh, wish list here. Which would you put as priority? As priority, the top three. The train rails, the hot box, and the skid steer track placement. We're not going to be doing more paving next year that we put all very good so that's more of a winter machine so to speak so the cold patch i need to do a hot hat okay is the dump truck going to uh survive if it's branch off in places will it survive probably but that is a 2004 dump truck which we just put a body on not too long ago, probably three, four years ago. Um, and my feeling is that if you put the frame rails on it now, it will last for at least another five to ten easily. No? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, on your wish list, what is Necessity and what is would be nice. I think the pavilion roof at Highlands be the priority um, because of residents using it and the liability that could happen if something is to fail. Um, if we would have to cut anything else, 
I would say we maybe one mower, but we definitely need to replace two would be great if we can't do all three. Um, I would suggest we take out the largest, the 90, we have them on the thing here that the 96 inch would be the one I would cut at um, you have 144 and a 72 inch. We have, I had requested two 72 inches and a 96 inch. Okay. It was perfect. Sorry. That's okay. So removing the 96 inch, the, the 144 is okay. It's way too big. It's okay. not so what we're going to need trailer and everything. It's just overkill. Uh, the 96 is a nicer, it's more comparable to the one, the large one we have now. Would that change the price of both of them or the price of both? The price there for the 96 is correct as of February of 24. That's what we got it. Um, 72 inch, they're, they're, if one goes down, we can make up with two. It just takes a lot longer, a lot more shuffling around. So it'd be nicer to have to eliminate them. So, but like I said, I can get away with the, um, the one we have now, the 120 inch one that we have now. The bigger of the two of, of the three. Um, the guy, that one is the one I primarily use, but it's not every day. So it's not used nearly as much now that we have the other um, crew member and we have the two um, zero turns, the six foot techs. They're going just, they're going three times a day, eight hours a day, three times a week. So we're trying to give them more rest, but it hasn't worked out. It's 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 <laughs> even 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 um even the fairways and that that that's minimal. I'm talking about all the open spaces that we have a plan and all the other parks we can get everything done. Um and then Friday is usually we'd have to do what we'll do North Branch twice because of the sports teams and because of the athletic teams that have to play here. We try to keep that to a perfect, I would I would say um more suitable for sport athletics. You know, we can't let it really get too overgrown. So, right. um, now this year, obviously, we're at a standstill. So, unfortunately, but that's where I, I, I would say. Okay. I, I'm just trying to get a, a sense of what's needed, what's needed desperately, what's needed sometime, and what would be nice to have. Well, the fence over at Highlands is cosmetic too. So, I mean, if you want to take something out, that could probably be either one of the mowers or that. It's still functional. It's just not slightly. So, it would be nice to get be nice to get that for up and going. I just had a meeting with recreational resources of the new playground system over there to incorporate everything. He's going. He's working on it. Allowed to with me within a couple of weeks. Incorporating all handicap accessible. All the ideas that and I came up with to make it compliable. Before we get behind the eight ball with the new development that's going up, it would be nice to see that at least get in a direction where it's moving forward. Well, let me just clarify my own legal mind. You were looking for two 72 inch mowers. Correct. And one 96 inch mower. Correct. No question, Dan. Have any of these items been incorporated in the budget you presented? To yes, them? they have been. Everything's everything on here is already in the budget, including the parking lot taking. Yes. So I'm, I'm going to bring this up because I thought we had discussed this previously, and we had talked. I think Ryan, you had said because I remember talking about the telephone poles and how to get rid of them and that sort of thing. Um, and you had suggested getting rid of them and putting up a fence around it with some sort of shrubberies. Um, and I know that EAC is working on putting in a garden near there. They haven't presented that yet. Um, because I'm not in favor of spending $100,000 to pay that. I've lived here 32 years. I've never had a problem with that parking lot. Um, I'd rather spend $100,000 on playground equipment for the residents. Um, I've never heard anyone complain about it. So I think you had given us a price of 25 or 35 to put up a fence around it. And there, were, there were two different quotes that I have combined 
made that, here yeah. two years ago. One was to pave it to fencing, and I believe it was some kind of rain garden or flower bed or what have you around it. And the other one was to basically level it off with fresh stone. Um, I don't recall if there was a fence involved with that one. I basically recall that I, we're still going to put the fence up and get rid of the telephone pole. I can go back and provide you with the quotes from previously. Okay. So that you have. Because I thought we had taken that off the capital plan and decided not that it wasn't worth taking that lot. That's my recollection. Or so what what does our capital plan call for next year? Capital projects. I mean, I don't see what our capital plan is. Yeah, I haven't. No, no that's the high. That's, that's what they want. Highlights. Yeah, we I, we haven't seen the capital plan this year. We don't know what's going mm -hmm. on. And it, it was what three or five years, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was five years. Five year plan. Yeah. yeah. Well, going off the capital plan, uh, Dan. All the things that is on this wish list is not coming out of our general fund. Not general fund, no. Oh, so it's coming out of capital or park and rec capital. So that's not it's it won't help out no. 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 no, no, no capital expenses will be pulled out of the general fund. Um we'll, we may at times do tra a transfer from the general fund because when you do a capital uh, expense out of the general fund when you're trying to track numbers year over year over year that that capital expense kind of throws off the numbers it's hard to so in regard to the capital plan we we did meet and we are going to be getting together again and looking at years 26 through 29, um, 25, I, we can certainly pull out the one that was from before for 25, um, but we we wanted to focus on 25 as a standalone at this point in time. To We wanted to catch up to where we were supposed to be. We'll, we'll pull out the plan in the morning. Um, print that out. Well, I know Bill and I would appreciate it. We'll get it. Okay, thank you. So next year, the capital plan was phase two of the pickleball courts. No, okay. Uh, phase two of the replaced front cut lot. Phase one this year was 50 grand. Next year was 200 grand. Front lot for which part? Capital improvement for 2025 was. Uh, a new person, uh, sworn personnel for police. This is all police. Traffic truck, administrative vehicle, electric char charging stations, admin, an admin um, ask. Code enforcement vehicle replacement, Keller Road Bridge. <laughs> there we go. That's the big one. There we go. And then public well, works we municipal. Was still just um, debt, and then road equipment was two thousand four. Replace the rims. So that's John Deere truck, and replace the frame rails of the two thousand four Mack truck. So a little clearer. So all of this has been has been put in the budget. When you were talking about the money, you were talking about what's left of the ARPA funds. Yes. Okay. When I was of the $1.2 million, I was yes. talking about what's left. Well, basically, a hundred and. Okay. I thought that's all we had to work with for. Oh, capital no. Fund. No. Capital is, is a standalone fund. Um, it's it's healthy. The capital for park and rec is healthy. Um, they, get, they get funded each year by a mill. Um, Plus, we've gotten some. We should have gotten some nice payments from certain. We have the. We have. I can get you those balance numbers, okay. but um, yeah. Okay. 
one of the things that we we're going to switch over to once for the preliminary budget and the final budget is we're going to go to the format that you've seen before for the budgets. Um, this is basically, <laughs> we did this uh, to, to show the history of what gets spent. These are basically work papers of what has been spent in the past. So you can kind of judge, you can look at the past to make a decision on the future. And where you're at now, and and get all the the data you need. Um, once this is, we've been building the regular budget as we're going through this, and that's the format you'll see going forward. But these were important, in my view, to show us the history of where we've been and how we got here and where we're going, and why we're making certain decisions. Correct. I just have them over there as a preliminary meeting, so I have something that we can go by for future capital plan meetings. Okay. Um, did, did we have something for the, the North Branch? We do. And that was already presented to the Parks and Recreation Board. Um, we were waiting for the engineering to come this past year. So, um, I can I can send that. I have it Which is in my right. proposals. I know that you must have seen it at some point. And they're they're always willing to they can cut things down here and there as far as yeah, they'll give me a, an overall footprint of what it's going to be. Obviously we have we, we can make adjustments as we have uh, memorial trees planted around there and there is a gas line right away that is going to probably be a problem, but I think it can move. If we could do it the right way, move everything towards the gas line without infringing on the right away too much, that we might be able to put something in there without disturbing the memorial trees. Because that would be problematic, I think. Well, I, I would like to see some improvements in the recreational uh, equipment we have for the residents because I hear all the time my neighborhood has kind of changed over to young families and they tell me all the time how nice Warrington and Doyle some parks are and why don't we have anything like that? Well, like I said, so. if you're looking at these eight frame swings, well, we have everything's really large swings. So I think the nice thing is the playground that we put out back is like yes. state of the art. So that's going to be, I think that should be the new norm for what we're going to so with this company. This is what they do. I've worked with them several times. They're great. Um, Steve's come out more than willing to. Is that the guy that is that the company that did the back? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we met him. He was nice. Um, so yeah, I can I can I can get that proposal together. Okay. So would you consider that replacing the top lot should be what was planned supposed to be for 2025? Can be done instead of doing the parking lot. Yes, I would say absolutely. That's that's more. I look at it. One of the things, as you see, a model of a stroller going from the train facility that they have back there to the swing set, and then back, and then so, like I said, I, I have the I have the footprint. It's in my on my computer. I have it saved from. I think it was two years ago. We put together a year ago, two years ago. So, um, it's a two. It's two to five. It's a top lot. So that's what it's going to be geared to. It's the younger kid. Would the board be seeing if that would fit into the capital budget? I think, we need, I think we need to understand from Ryan what the cost would be. I mean, there's something that needs to be done with that parking lot. It's not, maybe it's not $100,000 worth, but I, I just pulled up what I think was the quote, and it looked like it didn't save a whole lot by not paving it. Well, no. So that quote that you sent actually has. A binder course, which is fifty four thousand dollars included in that cost still. Okay, so it's about half of that. Then. So okay. yeah, I would say. And we'll have to drop the line painting too. Right. Yeah. I'd say you're probably maybe thousand dollars. Okay. In that ballpark. Okay. We might want to start with the the fence and what yeah, I, I know. The I know yeah. Gilmore has engineered something out there. 
So if we could get the fence in place, get rid of the telephone logs, That's it would be more attractive. Well, we'd still have the telephone poles in the center, which guide the people in the parking spaces. You're just talking about the perimeter of the, oh, the, the there's also some that line in the center of the lot to keep right. more like designated yeah. roads for people to park, which you would think you'd be able to figure it out, but. <laughs> you have to have something. Yes. <laughs> None of which car you're driving, you need to take up two spots. <laughs> Well, the question I have a question for admin. Yes. <laughs> Large meeting room furniture upgrade. It's in it was in the capital plan. That was phase two. Yes. Phase one was doing the admin offices. Phase two was redoing the foyer and this room, repainting, replacing the furniture. Getting rid of those pink bulletin boards back there. Um, I think getting new chairs up here and all the tables. Um, Could we do some things without doing all of it? The cool without doing 75. Do you mind the chairs out there? Okay with me. <laughs> How better are the chairs up here, guys? That can last another year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least paint. I would certainly suggest that we paint and um, and the carpet. Well, and... We're going to replace the ceiling tiles. The ceiling yeah. tiles are part of Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah it probably makes sense to replace the carpet if you're going to. If there was any issues with the air quality, it might have settled in the carpet too. Right. Well, that's all part of pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't see the cost being huge for that. And tech, the technology upgrades, what was that allotted for? That was the microphones, the TV getting some screens in here that we can use for it's like we have similar in the um uh, in, in the in the boardroom so you can actually do a presentation and, and the board can see it and the public can see it but I'd one more do that than agree mm -hmm. yeah we'll uh we'll refine that number the right the so number four and five there too. yeah Adjust what we're doing with that money. I would imagine that would cut that total in half. Mm -hmm. And the finance budget cycle. Can you tell us about that? Um, it can make doing the work easier and the presentation easier. Like these worksheets right now that I'm hearing that maybe there's a little dislike. Um, we would be able to get away from that. And um, when there's issues of trying to not have any mathematical mistakes because I'm pulling and getting it, doing the work mostly in Excel to for the presentation. Well, it's going to be... Um, it's a compliment to Edmonds, but budgeting, you know, is an entirely different animal. We would have more capability of forecasting and playing around with different scenarios and being able to see them one against the other. A capital plan wouldn't be a separate Excel document. It would be all in one place, operating capital together and be able to see those different scenarios of growth or, you know, tapping down on growth. Such as? Um, 
It's that's the license and the first and getting it up to speed. Um, what I mean is, um, sorry, I have a loss for words. Implementation, and then I don't think that includes maintenance. We haven't. To be perfectly honest, I haven't looked at any budgeting software. Okay, so this is a it's it's a ballpark. We, I, Kristen may have done some homework on this software. I have not looked at anything yet. It's it's a ballpark. But that's that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to I want to know kind of what we're doing with the website. I want to know all the nickels and dimes and what they need. What's the region? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, and if it works, it's it's, it's, it's what we need. So. Is that um awkward? So on the fly, we need to call What would the difference be versus what we have now? To say, press the one of these kind of on and blah blah blah. Does that change it? Is it significantly harder to do that now? I'm just trying to on the this. fly. I can't do anything on the fly. Like zero on the fly. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully there can be in our, it can, it will have the capability to interact with a website, but you know. That's <laughs> No, yeah, you can see it. It's a project just like we're doing with the website that we will, you know, sit down and we'll look at a lot of different vendors and figure out what works best for us. That was a critical budget. Have we done have some questions of our people here? I know Ryan has to meet a contractor. Budget discussions? Good. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you gentlemen. Thank you. Um, as one of those things that was on the capital plan for the city of Hello Road group. Yeah. We are, PennDOT is going to be doing an inspection shortly on Keller Road Bridge, um, probably sometime late this month or in November. Um, what is their aim to inspect the bridge? To see if it's, if it's travelable, if it's, if it's usable. Um, see, it's the safety and to see if the, the, the weight rating is appropriate for where it's at, the tonnage number. Um, so they'll do that inspection. They'll see if it's, it's, if it's safe, basically. Um, and they'll come back with a report on that. The, and it's, it, to completely redo the bridge is exorbitant. I mean, we're looking at $2 million. It's not exorbitant. Then a couple million on Walter's road culvert, redoing it three times. <laughs> my my issue, not my issue, but the, what I point out is with Keller Road Bridge, the traffic counts on that road are extremely, extremely low. Now we haven't done them. In, I believe the board had them done in 22 was the last time you did them. We can certainly do them again. Um, but they were 50 cars a day, uh, and most, and rarely anything after seven or eight o'clock at night. It was basically day traffic. Will those numbers go up? Could be. People use it as a cut through. Um, but we have to, you have to make a decision on yeah. what you do. So two million to replace. And what was the estimate to keep? 
we 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 didn't have we don't have a firm firm estimate. That's a Craig good came idea. Craig came up with an idea of seeing if we can get somebody in there who would weld the bridge professionally instead of having Ryan do it, which would make perfect sense if we're going to do something along those lines. Um, and that could be done. We don't know the exact number, but my guess it would be south of $100,000. Um, we still have the issue with the gabion baskets underneath. Um, some of them have washed, yeah. have washout issues. They're still they're still functioning to stabilize the bank, not the way they were originally designed, but they are still functioning. Um, but we'd have to make a decision how far you want to go with fixing that. And is it worth that kind of money for that little traffic? I don't think that it's worth $2 million. Mm -hmm. I wonder, and I I believe Craig said something about the Gabian baskets aren't really the standard anymore or something on that line. No, we could probably, and I talked to Craig and, and Janine about this, is um, we could look at those Gabian baskets and see if we can get MS4 credits for them to replace them um, as part of an MS4 project. And then look at doing the the decking separately, uh, you know, having somebody come in and and weld it and see if, again, you know, we're probably at the end of the day looking at three hundred thousand dollars, maybe four. So let's have the report from Ken about how we'd like to get some more information from our staff. Yeah, how to move forward on either. Yeah. Okay. Like what are all yeah. yeah. I think, and how we manage this, but do you think a survey? Well, the one woman who complains all the time. She's <laughs> still there. Oh, she's still there. She emailed me on Saturday. The we close it to traffic and just put a gate up over it and have to a, go We have an option. We, we have talked to the chief. And this was discussions, I believe, you had in 22, if I'm not mistaken. And from the police standpoint, it doesn't matter if it's open or closed. They respond from where they're at. They don't respond from a fixed location. The fixed location is the fire company and the ambulance. They respond from a fixed location. Would they love to see the bridge be open? Sure. It just gives them an alt another route. Does it impact them if it closes? A little, but they find ways around it. Uh -huh. And the question is, what does it do to response times? And I, I'll get that information from the fire company and the EMS. Uh -huh. So, yeah. And the school district, they, they can reroute. They can reroute the buses. So. Yeah. If we decide to do something, I would suggest we don't do it till the end of the school year. So oh, no. They don't have yeah. to reroute mid year. No. But... <laughs> no. Well, we won't get to the school time. Right. Sometime next year, probably. Probably. Yeah. It's just I would like to get a decision. This has been, it's been on every agenda since I <laughs> joined the board in January. Oh, I think it pre exists that. <laughs> To be perfectly honest, I think I was looking back in the file and I saw stuff from like uh, 18. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. So we'll wait for the report and then we'll gather more information and make decisions. Traffic signal maintenance. Is this the thing that John Granger had Craig engineer? Or they talked about it. I'm not exactly sure what you want to do with that. I mean, the traffic lights aren't exactly bad. Um, there are grants out there. Don't get me wrong. There is a um, an Arley grant where you interconnect your red lights. You do a, a stretch. You did, <laughs> and the money comes from the red light cameras in the city of Philadelphia. So there is some advantage to the city. 
<laughs> but you basically you hardwire your traffic lights together and as part of that you replace all the lights and get all new light standards put in it's not cheap and it's a 25 percent match and to do each intersection is probably about 250 to 300 thousand dollars so each light you do and they'll want you to do the entire stretch in your town that's the one grant i'm aware of for red lights I think price is about six hundred thousand when we looked at it. Per signal, per no share share for the town. Oh, what we doing? I, I think, think it's three or four. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought this traffic signal maintenance was more down at uh, Sydney Drive. That was one of the. It was, was a report we got on which ones yeah. Craig John had Craig engineer the whole thing, um, but I remember. Our share was six hundred thousand because I remember yeah. Cynthia going. Where are we getting six hundred thousand dollars from? What, John? <laughs> what I would let me take a look at all that. That I think that's more of a twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight type thing. Um. So you can read. You can read. So you can adjust the timing. When you get a green light, when you get a green light, and I think was the the school zone at St. Jude part of that too. No, no, it wasn't. Okay. One of the reasons one of the reasons we did it in in East Town was that when two hundred two would back up, the local traffic would flow on the thirty on Route thirty, which is Lancaster Avenue, and those lights weren't timed for all that additional traffic. So when there's, say there's an accident somewhere and you need to adjust, PennDOT can go in and there's a controller box and PennDOT actually is in charge of timing of traffic lights. It's not us, it's, they, they said it. And they will monitor the flow of the traffic on the road and they'll see if there's a need to adjust the timing to alleviate large delays. I, again, it's, it's one of those things that's out there. But I'll we'll we'll take a look at that as far as a future project, all the lights, and see what what we need to do. It's not urgent. I don't believe so. No, I haven't. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen anything presented to me that shows that it's an urgent need. It's a um, it's a future thing that we should look at because they are ours, and we have to you know understand that something goes. We need to to do them. But I think this started. Business route 202 in school because she has a son in her household that is blind. Mm -hmm. and that's all the air, all the oil up to the giant. And that to do the audio. To do the audio. Oh, okay. It's not the yeah, right. But that would be part of the other. Everything thing. would be, yeah, yeah. everything would, yeah, all, all yeah. everything would be automatically, yeah. whatever the handicap yeah. accessibility yeah. standards are, everything's automatically yeah. upgraded to those. That's not a, so it's not even an option. It's all part of, yeah. Any new light that goes in has to meet those qualifications. So I didn't expect to go. I think it's maybe more looking into that. Yeah, it's something that's it's on the radar. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, we'll want to see if we can get yeah. yeah. no, a wonderful thing. <laughs> yeah. We don't have to put up our, put up our, put up our money. The best grant is no match, the worst grant is big match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. Give us a report about whatever we talked to about the Yeah, I I, I met with the the architect who the, the board hired him back in February of twenty three. If I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. Actually, I believe it was the second meeting in February or or first meeting in March of, of twenty three. You hired um and I can never say their yeah. name. Yeah. Let's just go with yeah, them. <laughs> um I met with them. They they they're they're a good firm. Um 
I don't know who had problems with them before. I think they weren't given the proper direction and there wasn't the proper um, setup to make it a successful study. Um, Only one person dealt with them. Well, actually, two. two. The chief was involved. What they, what every every building, every architect will come in and they'll they'll try and get an overall idea of what needs to be accomplished, and then they sit down and they talk with staff to get needs assessment as far as how much space is needed. And that's it's all it's a math problem. It's number of people you have, X, Y, Z. It's it's basically coming up with how much space is needed for the size of your operation. Um, and then they'll they'll put that together. Where I think it went off the wheels a little is that at that point they weren't given any real direction on what to do. I've looked at, I know a bunch of the buildings they've done firsthand. Uh, they know what they're doing. They're, they're a good firm. We have not expended the entire amount of that contract. There's about $12,000 left to spend. <laughs> I think that the board, obviously we, we might as well spend that money. <laughs> but I think we should have, in my opinion, a way building projects take a life of their own. They always have and they always will. And they'll meander until there's finally a definitive decision made, go right or go left. Um, I would I would suggest that we bring them back in, give them a, a clear charge, put a committee together that includes two supervisors, staff, and sit down and meet with them, go through what we're looking for, give them the parameters, and let's, let's see what happens. Um, we know that there's a need, especially downstairs. I thought we already basically did that. They came in with the grandiose said we have to scale it back. Yeah, but I don't think we gave them specific instructions about what scale what, back what, scale what, back. what scale back was. And that's what I, I think we need to, I think there needs to be more, they need more direction. Sure. No. We well, said, no, that's not what we want, yeah. but not, this is what we want. Right, and I, I, would, I would bring them back in and re-engage them and give them clear direction what we're looking for. And let's, Let's let that part of the process play out. Um, again, in my experience, these are projects that go for a while. Uh, it, it will not, no matter what you do, it's not going to be a, a cheap answer. And I, I use this analogy all the time from my bond work. For every million dollars you borrow, it is eighty thousand year eighty thousand dollars a year in debt service for a twenty year bond issue. That's a kind of a rule of thumb, right? Rates have all have always been in that little world. So if it's five million dollars, just five times eight is your annual debt service. So you, you you just have to when you're hearing size and scale of projects, you can use that to say this is what we have to come up with each year to pay for it. But anyway, that so I would bring them back in and, and let, let's re-engage them, give them clear direction, sit on top of them, and see what the, and work to see what they come back with, and and then the board can say you know you can all we you, you can define it a lot more. You want to set up that committee now, and and when you say staff, I don't just mean management. I'd like the people that actually work in the offices to have. A seat at the table, which they weren't given at that point, even about the furniture. Oh, that was, that was before. before. I know. I'm just saying, I would like people that actually have to use the building <laughs> to be commenting on Understood. what's going on. Yeah. I don't think we need a gym and we don't need a spacious two story. Solarium on the front of the building, um, and that sort of thing. We need to upgrade. Whether we can upgrade, just upgrade, 
or whether we need to add on for the police department. I was going to say, I also sort of vaguely recall probably as an audience member, the cost of do we do a separate police building? Mm -hmm. um, and versus let's do some renovations. Versus mm -hmm. renovations and part of that cost being if we're doing renovations here, we need to find the temporary space and there's that cost of where do we put space. I mean, I mean when, when it comes down to it, you basically have three options or four options when you're doing a building project. The first option is do nothing. A lot of times that's the default option. Mm -hmm. The second is complete renovation, upstairs, downstairs. Third is just a, a renovation downstairs, an expansion downstairs, and some minor changes up here. And the fourth is a completely new building. I mean, they're, they're basically your four options that you're looking at. One of them, do nothing, is probably not feasible. A completely new building is probably not feasible. So we're looking at either the, those other two, and that's what the board has to evaluate what the value is of the doing this and you know does it make sense but yeah so do nothing has been sort of the default option for the last That's what I've been, of years. there's no decision so I, I, I I'd like to get that oh Mary Beth uh Ruby. believe me I, I've been part of building projects my entire career and the first couple times around with any board the do nothing usually wins until they find that the, the absolute need says we need to do something. And it's because of the, the sticker shock. It really is. It's you think it is all I know. I have, every town, every yeah, the, the three big towns I've managed, I mean, we've gone through building projects in each one of them. And I remember the sticker shock we had when we came with the public works yeah. building. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, yeah. Tough. So Public comment? Any public would like to make a comment? <laughs> I just want to ask if we have any Malcolm Street plan funds that haven't been spent, they have to be returned by the end of the year. We did talk about that actually. Oh, ARPA is American Rescue Plan. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the thing. I was wondering if this will be covered with. Like the, the plan that you're looking at now that the public will be able to see. The plan for what? The, capital, yeah. the, the budget? The budget should be for that year we've just been discussing. The building or the, the no, budget? Not oh, the budget. If when we adopt a preliminary budget, all right, and the goal is to do that at our first meeting in November, then it will be available for public inspection. And then it's just, just a general comment. I don't know what's going on with this parking lot thing, but has anybody, um, if you're going to pave it, have you asked an engineer what the effect of that would be since you've got an impervious surface back there? They would have to. And it would have to be engineered. So you've got the cost of that. Yep. That's going to get there. And then the other thing you were just talking about, I, I remember sitting on parks and rec and we were talking about the telephone poles and get rid of them and all. Um, and they guide people where to park. You could just as easily put a split rail fence in the middle too. If, and if you want to remove all of the parking, all of the poles, you know what I'm saying? Like you've got the poles there now around the perimeter in the middle. So people know they have both sides to park up. You could easily put a split rail fence in the middle too, to go. That's all. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Our next Board of Supervisors meeting will be next Monday night at 7 p.m. Any other announcements? I don't think there's another meeting. So we're going to do another meeting. Thursday. Parking records tonight. Uh -huh. Thursday. Parking records tonight. Zoning hearing board meeting is on Thursday. But tomorrow is Valentine's. Oh, yeah. The, the, the link, whoever's doing the, the web up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the agenda for parks and rec is in your spot. I we, took care of it. Oh, I fixed it. Yeah. One of the things when we 
we redo the website, we will control that ourselves. <laughs> yes, it's out of my hands, unfortunately. <laughs> Second. Second. Okay. 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 Ok